The last solo FNCS was epic. We only have two games left, bro. This is coming down to the wire. The all-star event that changed so much. And man, the endings were absolutely ridiculous. And makes us really want a solo FNCS or something equivalent. I need that. We need that. While it can be flawed, when you actually look at some of these major POIs, there is entire teams splitting them like they're giant puzzle pieces. Like you get that building, you get that building, I'll take this building, you take that building. It accomplishes two things. One, it's a great distillation of who the best individual performer is at the time. Who is going where and which of these real or which of these solos rather going head to head at the competition? We need to keep our eyes on, right? Because this is a stacked map if I've ever seen one. Two, it's a great opportunity for a new crop of players to break onto the scene without needing to find a team. That's why I do love solos. Despite all the RNG, despite all the annoying stuff, it gives a chance for new and up and coming names to jump up and prove themselves. A ton of all-time greats made their names first in major solo tournaments like Venno, Giannis, Tayson, and Buga. And in the middle of 2021, we were blessed with the solo all-star tournament which may have been the last ever solo FNCS. This is more hyped than all the FNCSs before. And while everyone remembers EU, he's moving forward, forcing the placement, Tayson on all walls, but he oh sees everything goodness. through, finds it, a big match from Tayson oh takes my. them all. NA was incredible. Coming down to the last game, we could end up with one of those moments where the final victor walks away with it. And perfectly weaving three storylines together, the FNCS veteran desperate for his first win. An up and coming player with just one FNCS top 10 to his name, and a mystery player who had never played in a grand finals exploding onto the scene. Here's the story of the solo all stars on NA, a tournament that reset the trajectory of a region and shocked the world. And if you like great stories about Fortnite competitive, please sub. The solo all-stars took place at the start of season seven. It was a very compelling concept. The 90 best players based on FNCS placements from season five and six were invited with the final 10 spots available via an open qualifier called the play-in round. In case you missed this, there's 10 spots up for grabs in each region. So now let's understand the three players whose stories will forever be linked in this tournament. Kanata was one of just three players on the region to have qualified for all eight FNCS Grand Finals up to that point, an accomplishment he holds on all to himself now. Oh my god! Oh my god! He began as an up and coming mechanical demon on Tifu's trio in Season X and then his squad the following season but started making noise in the FNCS solo invitational in season two, where he placed fourth. And from here, it was uninterrupted rise to the top of the region. Oh, whoa, 180, 180, go, go, go. 100, 100, 180, what's good, Adrian? 200 on Adrian, oh my God. He placed 10th in Stark Season, 3rd in Season 5, and 10th in Season 6. Despite a meteoric rise, he had yet to win an FNCS, and none would be more legacy-defining than a solo win. Pam Stu, on the other hand, was just beginning his rise. He played in his first Grand Finals in Chapter 2 Season 3, placing 92nd, but he didn't play in Grands again until Chapter 2 Season 6, where he placed 10th with Fatch and W. Carey, which was enough to get each of them invited to the Solo All-Stars just a few weeks later, giving Pam Stu the opportunity to shock the world. If Pam Stu was an up-and-comer, Peterbot was a total mystery. Goodness, listen, we were just talking about this in the back, okay? Who the heck is Peterbot? He had never played in a Grand Finals, having only made heats in the previous two seasons. But when it was announced that the final 10 spots of the tournament would be open qualifiers, he saw his chance. We'll be hosting the solo all-star play-in tournament for all eligible Champion League players. In the play-in round, he cooked. Peterbot in six. Asian Jeff plays first with a very interesting name, by the way. His first Grand Finals. Moving on to NA East Top 10, we had Asian Jeff come in first on 97. He pulled out a ridiculous six elimination win in the final game. So in addition to these three, who were the all-stars on NA? Zay was retired, but he was invited and played in the tournament. 
just a troll Epic Games who had recently removed Aussie Antics from their casting roster. Trolling aside, the lobby was incredible. World Cup veterans like Macwood, Bucky, Dub, Slack, Cease, Creo, Reverse 2K, Saf, Booga, and Clicks. The post World Cup superstar contingent like Jack, Miro, Avery, Scented, Edgy, Agers, Day, Acorn, and Stretch and players like Tragix who would use this tournament as an opportunity to show the region just how good they were. Unlike EU, none of the top players on NA had won a solo FNCS, the previous two were won by Furious and then Coop, who had one thing in common. That is a controller player! Both FNCSs were won in the overpowered aim assist era. So with the game's greater balance, the region's established stars look to break through for the solo win. <laughs> So with so much on the line, let's get to the games. Kanata starts the tournament strong, cooking in endgame. Well, and down comes Aegis looking for anything. Sentry gets clipped off by Kanata now. Kanata at five eliminations here, ladies and gentlemen. And now another medkit's gonna come out. Desperate to find any HP, but Ooh. instead, the refresher, the siphon. Sundown, look at this. He's got a piece of batch. Hello, 180. The cone comes in. He's caught there too. Down he comes. Peterbot takes out commandment. Running through. He's on four Elims, but just like Canada was oh my at four God. Elims, he's completely out of builds and he swaps to his pickaxe. And Jack takes the game one win. I got, but with only a singular build, Frisk back in the zone, but so is Jock. Peterbot drops oh, down. No. He doesn't mind the shot. And Jock back to back. Two eliminations. In mid-game, match one winner Jack goes down. Sometimes I would say pop a bandage, but you're not gaining any time there. As Pamstu clings on to a few more points. It means if you don't find somebody else's, you're taking fall damage. In game two, comes down to Kanata versus Peterbot in an epic 1v1. He still doesn't have any ammo here, Sundown. I'm not sure if he has enough firepower to actually win this game. He needs to drop down and go. He has that launch pad that he didn't end up using, but with only the five builds and all of them being wood, all of his priority positioning is gone. Come so instead, here. looking to hop into the box, but instead he has the flop where he's going to pop the flop to try and maintain the positional advantage. He's hawking down on top of it. Meanwhile, Canada Ooh. on the low ground ended up picking up next. The Casker falls right after, but Canada gets a second. Nice. Can he get a third? Peter no. finds the shot, but built by gamers. Canada comes up huge. Seven elims in the first one. And Canada takes first place with Peterbot in second. Peterbot is challenged off spawn early, but he is Peterbot. He doesn't have a ton of other options. The pistol, very good in the close range, has the two times headshot multiplier, but it will at least have a shotgun and be able to trade back. But Peterbot knows he's broken the shield, gets in and he takes it out with 41 HP to spare, a clutch early elimination. Wow. And he says, hey, take that L. After a mountain zone in game two, we got a water zone in game three. Ooh, no way. No shot. Not a that single is... person, by the way. <laughs> I know. That's what I, that's what I was just looking at. The fact that you're going north and you're just barely touching the side of that peninsula. Kanata is looking to get any point he can, but goes down. With the limited camera view, just look how comfortable he looks here. He looks like he has been here before, but it doesn't matter. Clicks makes a sneaky play after a slow start and starts cooking. Get up his power position. He comes out though. It was the right play. It was sneaky and it works. Casker takes out Clicks to win. It's out tragic, so on the edge there, the siphon is good. It comes through. Ooh. The sniper shot, toe to toe, out in the open. No more builds and Clicks goes down. Kanata hangs on to his lead. With no builds, Commandment makes a beautiful edit to take out Justice. It's gonna be down towards the edge here. Back with Commandment though, against Justice builds. runs out of builds. Beautiful edit right there though. 55 on the Punish Sundown. Oh my gosh, how do you win that? Day takes out his trio mate, Miro. And there's no material near him. He can't leave. Literally, as, as long as Day and Miro do this, is the only opportunity. Frat needs to get out of there. He oh needs to gosh. get out now while these two are distracted. Day and Miro are just going at it. And Day obliterating Miro. Kasker, who's in third place, goes down early. With a nice thank you, production. I was just about to say, because we had it with that legendary boom, AR. Boom, ding, boom. ding, oh, ding. The, they barely even fired it. And Kanata finds himself in trouble in mid-game and goes down. A massive blow. Which is weird because it didn't seem like there was anybody who was super near him either on that rotation. However, everyone packing in towards the southern side of the zone. The reason everyone is on the outside, I 
Ignore what I'm saying right now as Kanata gets ripped apart. Tragix went on a nice killing spree in Endgame, pushing him up the leaderboard. Okay, goes down to the hands of Cease. Let's not forget Cease was up in that top 15. He's looking to maintain that. Maybe do want to leave it a little bit better, but no. Tragix take one, but then Thatch immediately picks up Jamper to put him into seventh. And then Tragix, another gift with that aim down sight's pump, finding all of the pellets. Also falls to Tragix's pump. He's starting to put it work. He drops in dubs. He's also oh. going to go down. Stretch holds height and Pam Stu heals off. I time and there's nothing here for him. Pam's out. Okay. Tragics earns a little bit more. And now it's a one on one. It should be all but over here. As Stretch will find the final tag. With Kanata barely holding first, Tragics jumping to second and Pam Stu jumping to tenth, setting the table for a surge up the leaderboard. Peterbot is struggling with Surge early. Peterbot, wall to wall, 47 damage below, oh third no. place, having to go. And this is what we talked about in the first two games. He was fine in terms of the Storm Surge, but then after that, the Headshot Snipe in game three, Storm Surge in game four, damage ticking him back over. The other players should know. But cannot get back on track as he goes down early, as the clock approaches midnight for him. Then Kanata goes down before getting real points, meaning a leaderboard shakeup was inbound. Yeah, instead going to disengage because he has decent priority. No! Tragix cooks Avery. Bounce backward, who's up on height, boxes him right away. Who gets the conversion on that? Doesn't matter. Cease sees an opportunity to jump up the leaderboard. At the zone with only seven builds, trying to edit through, but there's a trap on the other side, and the trap was set. No, it wasn't Cease. No Cease way. Picks up it, and he gets dubs. And Pampstu, one of the last remaining players in contention, sees his opportunity. Six points here. He's on the hunt. He's looking for anyone who's down low, and you can hear the builds coming through. Rep comes in. That's Mars OW. Mars is down. Doesn't let go of the trigger, though. He runs to another one. And keeps cooking, channeling greatness. Before that top five, they want to make it all the way through. And Dom finds Qua on the backside of the zone. But then oh immediately, Pam finds Chimp. I need it. Takes him away. He's going to drop down and connect. Now completely oh, out of build. So Zuni is two. And wins. Everyone else is in the zone. Everyone else is out of mats. Pam is shooting fish in a literal barrel from the high ground. Can Slacks make the wall-to-wall -wall play? Zone. He goes for a pickaxe, but Pam just stays in. Taking first place. In game 6, the pressure is on, especially for Pamstu, Tragix, and Kanata, as a good game could clinch the tournament. For Tragix, his tournament would come down to an early 1v1 box fight against Edgy. Energy Edgy, I mean, we saw him during the All-Star Skill Challenge. Tragix has to go and he has to go now. 25 damage every 5 seconds is going to come through. The pump shot as well as Storm Surge is going to start pressuring him. What is he doing? Wait a second, he tries to run, he tries to outrun it, one player has to go down. No, I thought maybe he had a game plan, maybe he had a strategy. As Kanata is furiously mounting his comeback. Picking down, only six above, he was 13 above before that. But Ed Penn is in his oh, box, no 103, he opens it up right oh. away, and that is huge! In endgame, Pam Stu runs out of builds. No builds, our leader is on no builds. But it's a launch pad, but he doesn't have anywhere he can place it. You have to own that, that build. Closer. He finds what? Slacks! Closer. He finds the third base Slacks on the backside of the zone. That is gross. That's the refresh he needs. No extra shields into the no box, way. but he's down. And gets as many points as he can as Kanata goes down too. Where is Kanata? Kanata's also down. On this day, Pamstu is special, finding a level of performance we had not seen before, winning $75,000. Kanata fell to third, his FNCS drought continuing for two more years before being broken in Chapter 4 Season 3. Tragix to fifth, and Peterbot in his first FNCS places eighth. He would go on to win FNCS three seasons later, with a stable of veterans like Slacks, Dubs, Bucky, Cease, and Edgy rounding out the top ten. This reaffirmed that while many World Cup veterans could still compete, the power players in the region were increasingly from the post-World Cup era, and enabled the rise of players like Pamstu, Tragix, and Peterbot who would all pretty quickly stand atop of the leaderboards. Iconic football coach Vince Lombardi once said, Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. And if this does not describe the players in this tournament, then we don't know what does. Like, sub, and check out our other videos.